excited to be able to have our baccalaureate service together uh, here this evening. And let's all begin, uh, we're going to start with a song together. The seniors will pick all of our songs tonight. service this year, and tonight our purpose is to bring glory to God, and we're going to do that through honoring these young people for their accomplishment, and it is an accomplishment, 12 years of life, more for some of you, I lay that aside, less for the others of you, okay, <laughs> but um, it is an accomplishment to get to this place, and most of all, we are excited about these young people taking the next step. Um, and a baccalaureate service is really all about us gathering together as the church to pray over and send these young people to the calling that they feel that God has placed on their life. And uh, all of us that are adults in here, we understand the challenges of entering into adulthood, the temptations of entering into adulthood. And uh, as the church, whether they stay local or they go off to college uh, or go off to some other place, we want to continue to be behind them and support them and love them and encourage them um, as the Lord would have us to do. And so that's what this time together is about tonight. And so as we uh, prepare to enter into this time, I want to have a word of prayer to ask God to bless 
uh, these moments we'll spend together. And I'd like to ask for Brother Steve Chapel, if you would, lead us in prayer. Father, we're grateful to be here this evening. And Lord, we honor these that are graduating. Lord, we lift them up. We pray that uh, they might be guided by your word. Lord, that they might uh, stay in your will. Lord, we just thank you for their accomplishment. We pray that you'd bless the service. And Lord, thank you for the leadership they've had here in this Christian school. We thank you for it. And Lord, we love you because you gave yourself for us. Lord, you provided salvation for all of us, and we're so grateful. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You may be seated. We're going to sing another song as you are seated. And another song they selected tonight in Christ alone, by the way. I'm thankful for the great doctrinal songs they picked for tonight. And uh, this is one of them, In Christ Alone. Let's sing this one together. And the first. In Christ alone my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are still, when striving cease, my comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand. In Christ alone, who took on flesh, fullness of God in helpless babe, this gift of love. Scorned by the ones he came to save Till on that cross as Jesus died The wrath of God was satisfied For every sin on him was laid Here in the death of Christ I lay There in the ground another great truth there, and I uh, uh, thank the Lord for that. Well, uh, I'd like to take some time here this evening uh, to honor um, our seniors, and we're going to take some time to, to pray over them in just a minute. Um, and so we've got uh, something important I'd like to give to all of you here tonight. And let me just say, you know, before I, before I give this, th these gifts to you, um, first, that we are proud of all of you. Um, and, you know, I feel like I've gotten to know all of you pretty well um, uh, over, over this past year. Some of you have only known for a year. Some of you have known for several now. And I have, I have been touched. I think we have a, a good senior class here this year. Uh, some young people who do have a desire to serve the Lord with good character I think you've been raised well. Um, I think that uh, um, uh, we, we were talking about this during the senior dinner. I think that uh, all of you have a servant's heart. 
um, your hard workers, um, and I think that those things are going to carry you a long way in your life. Um, but let me tell you, in giving you this gift, it's a Bible, and I think that all of you have a Bible. Uh, these, were, these are really nice Bibles. Uh, at every crossroads of my life, I had somebody give me a Bible. When I graduated from um, high school, my parents gave me a Bible. When I graduated from college, the college I went to gave me a Bible. Um, when I became a, a, a pastor, um, I bought myself a new Bible, <laughs> and I also got an ordination Bible. Um, before we were sent off from that church. And uh, I tell you what, every Bible I've ever gotten, I've worn it out. Now, part of that is because I live in the Bible a lot because I'm a pastor. I understand that. Um, but I was not preaching near as much for some of those Bibles. I just spent a lot of time in them. And I can tell you from my personal experience, if you will follow what the Word of God has to say for your life, it will never lead you astray. And I don't think that there is a more significant gift that we, and this isn't from just me, this is from us as a church, uh, that we can give to these seniors than a, co a copy of God's word. And I want to encourage you to take it. I want to encourage you to live in it. Um, read it. Let it help you, help guide you to the answers, to the questions that you are going to face in this next phase of life. And there's no doubt about it. And so let me present these to you. I'd like to have all of you come up and receive this and stand up here for just a moment um, while we give these to you. And so let me have Scott, Scott Early, come up here first. Now, Scott and her family um, are here tonight. She's a member at uh, Baptist Chapel down the street, and uh, I'm glad that they were able to come. I'm going to go ahead and give that to you. Scott is a sweet young lady, and it has been my privilege to be able to get to know her uh, over this past year. Very talented, but um, not prideful at all about it. Very humble, too. Uh, she can play the piano. She can sing beautifully. Uh, she can bake really well, too. Really well. In fact, she wants to start a bakery in Cortez, Colorado, which I'm really in favor of because I need a place that serves baked goods and coffee so I can go there and study, okay? So I'm going to be a supporter for sure, okay? Um... But she's, uh, she's got a great family, uh, the early family, and, of course, Miss Gail uh, teaches in our school, too, and they're such a blessing, and uh, they're a blessing to their church, and they have been a blessing to our church as well, and uh, we're proud of you, and so I want to give you that copy of the Bible. Um, if, uh, let me just have you stand right up here. I want you to stay up here with me. Uh, Marissa, Marissa Jordan, come on up here, Marissa. Now, some of you don't know all of our seniors, and so... I'm going to talk about them for just a minute so you can get to know them just a, a little bit. I got to know the, we, we, we've gotten to know the Jordan family over these past couple of years, and they have uh, sure been a blessing uh, to our church family. Um, my first introduction really to Marissa was on a, a teen trip that we took together. And all I could remember about that trip is she was the girl that got literally everybody, the guys, the girls, random strangers to do this. Okay. That was my first introduction to her. And she still does that, doesn't she? Um, but but this is a young lady. She's got a lot of character. She's a hard worker. And uh, um, as she's getting ready to head into this next phase of life, you said you're getting wanting to maybe go into being a midwife down the road or something along those lines, which I think is would be a, a, noble, a noble profession uh, to go into that, but still seeking the Lord's will and what God would have her to do. She's a very talented young lady. Uh, very smart. She was homeschooled, so don't hold that against her, okay? Um, I, can, I can joke around about that because I was homeschooled too, okay? Um, but uh, we are blessed to have her and her family uh, in our church, and uh, we are sure excited about your future, and so you take that with you. Um, Lexi Baker, come on up here. Now, Lexi is not a stranger to most of us uh, here at our church, and although some of us wish she was. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I got to, hey, listen, listen. I should have put a picture of what these, some of these seniors did to my office up on the screen for you. How many of you saw that video on Facebook? Yes. I was, I'm still finding post-it notes. I take books off my shelf. I open them. There's post-it notes. I turn my calendar. There's post-it notes. Okay. 
um, all over the place. But anyways, so anything I say that's mean is completely warranted. That's all I have to say about that. Um, but uh, Lexi has sure been a blessing. Your family moved here, what was it now? It was, man, five years, five years ago. And I remember when they first moved here, it was a hard move. They had grown up at uh, Landmark Baptist Church in Grand Junction. And uh, kind of hard moving, just getting into the youth group there and now moving to a different youth group and a smaller church and people I don't know. And there were all these factors there. Um, and But she jumped right in and began to grow in the Lord and uh, have watched this girl uh, uh, grow up through her teenage years. And I think she's grown up to be a, a wonderful young lady. Uh, she works hard. And uh, I think that she really has a heart to want to do what God wants her to do with her future. Wants to go into uh, teaching one day. And I told her, that's good because we have a Christian school here, by the way. Um, and so that would be just fine. Um, but uh, planning to go to Vision Baptist College. Going to stay here the first year to save money. And uh, uh, planning to go off to a good Bible college with a Charlie Clark there. And uh, we're excited for her uh, to be able to do that. Um, and uh, so, Alexi, I want to give you your Bible. I want to give you that Bible and uh, just let it guide you all of your days. Okay. Um, we have a Bible here for Cambria Wilkin, but she couldn't be with us tonight. And so, Cole, Cole, Jordan, come on up here, man. Now, this is a guy that not as many of us know. But we can already like him because he's wearing an In-N-Out shirt tonight, okay? <laughs> smart man, smart man. On the back too. Yeah, <laughs> it's better on the back, yeah. Uh, but boy, this, this young man has been a blessing. Um, started coming to our church, I don't know, it was about, about a year ago. About a year ago. Is that when, about the time he moved to this area? Uh, about the time he moved to this area. I, I saw him on the street the other day and... Um, we were both at the gas station, and I said, man, I want to take you out to lunch and talk to you about your future. And he looked at me, and he said, it's not going to be very bright. <laughs> You'll get around him, and you realize he's a jokester the more you're around him, okay? And uh, that's why I enjoy being around him. But he's a hardworking young man, and uh, uh, although I don't know you as well as I know some of our other seniors, I am excited about your future. And um, I tell you, that Bible will guide you in whatever your next steps are going to be in your life. And uh, we're proud of you, and congratulations on, on graduating. Now, he got done in December, so he's been done a little bit longer than everybody else. Let me have Autumn come up here, Autumn Steinberger. All right. Over this past year, it's been about a year now, I think. Was it September, August? August when we, uh, when we first got introduced, and... Um, uh, uh, her and her mom, Miss Monica, uh, I remember still the day when y'all came to my office and, uh, we talked about the gospel and, uh, just as clear as day when you got the assurance of your salvation. And that was a really special day. And it has been neat to watch, um, uh, this family as they've started coming to our church and particularly Autumn as she's began to grow in her faith, uh, gone through discipleship. Have you, I think you finished, are you getting close to finishing discipleship? Almost there gone through discipleship this past year, and uh, really has been seeking the Lord about her future and uh, what the Lord is going to have, have for her to do in the future. Um, and, you know, you know, one thing that, that I always say to young people is you don't, you don't have to have it all figured out right now. And even if you think you do, it's probably going to change, okay? Um, that's, that, that's just how life goes. But I do think that she desires to do uh, what God wants her to do uh, with her life in the future. And uh, origin what she had originally planned to do has, has changed now. I'm going to be staying in this area for a little while and, and uh, uh, taking some classes locally here. And uh, I'm glad that some of these seniors are still going to be around. And uh, it's always sad to see them move away and, and all of those things. And so, anyways, um, but it has been a blessing. One of the things that really touched my heart about Autumn this past year is that she... Um, I watched her, we had, um, uh, and we brought our teens to it as well, and teens from all over this county went out and, uh, to a um, Fellowship of Christian Athletes rally, um, in the, I don't remember when it was, it was last fall, I think, when it was, and I saw this young lady, the only teenager in the entire county, who stood up in front of all those other teenagers and publicly professed her faith in Jesus Christ, and just told her testimony 
and she didn't hold back either. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I really enjoyed watching her give that testimony and uh, just how she'd come out of the Catholic Church and realized the gospel of Jesus Christ and trusted Christ as her Savior. And it was a blessing. It was a blessing seeing her be so bold in her faith. And that'll carry you a long way. And so I want to give you that Bible to help guide you in these next steps. All right. And last but not least, Austin Briggs. Come on up here. Baby shark, do 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 baby shark. Thank you. I would like to take credit for that, but I can't take credit for that. <laughs> Oh, that was great. That was great. <laughs> Austin, man, uh, since since I moved here about seven years ago, uh, this guy was just a little guy. Uh, he wasn't very big yet, and uh, he's tall, but he's still not very big. He'll get there, okay? Um, but uh, uh, I watched I've watched this young man grow up, and I gotta say I'm proud of you. Uh, I, he has always had a servant's heart. Always been willing to serve, always been uh, respectful, and uh, I know I've uh, through the years I've watched him make some great decisions, and uh, I know uh, this next year uh, his plan is to uh, stay home um, and uh, and work. He's going to plan on going to Faith Bible Institute when the new semester starts in January, uh, is what we talked about here just a little while ago. And um, just trying to seek what the Lord has for his future. And uh, again, I'm, I'm glad that uh, some of these young people are going to be staying close by. But I tell you, church, it's burdened my heart because so many of these young ones are graduating and moving on about the great need that we have to get something started for college and career age young people. And uh, I'll just throw that out there while I'm talking about it. Um, but Austin, we're proud of you and love you, and uh, I'm going to give you that Bible to help guide you through this next step of your life. And so let's have all of our seniors come and stand over here. I'm sure some people want to take some pictures of all of you um, and give them a chance to do that. And I'd like you to stay up here. Go, Feel free to take pictures if you'd like to. I'd like you to stay up here for just a moment. Um, I have uh, Brother Mike Jordan. Um, He's going to come and say a, wor a few words, um, of course, about his senior and to all the seniors as well at this time. So my senior is, is Marissa. Um, and, you know, in, in thinking about the, I don't know, it's hard. Uh, she's, our, she's our little one. And her graduating school really, really is kind of, kind of bittersweet. And in thinking about that, it was just, just feels like yesterday, that we found her, clunking around the house in her, in her mom's, shoes, and a princess dress and a camouflage hat, and her mom's mascara all over her face. Um, but we've adored watching you grow up, into a young woman that we can really be proud of. You poured yourself into whatever was, um, whatever it was you set your heart to, whether it was science fair project, learning to ride and show horses, the shooting shotgun, and now, now watching you explore a career possibly um, as a doula or a midwife. You've been a great role model and friend to all those around you. And as you graduate high school, there's other new challenges awaiting you. And as you make a new chapter um, in your life, it doesn't mean that it all ends here. There are many more achievements awaiting in the future. All you have to do is look inside, and you will discover you have the ability to do great things. And I pray that God will always guide you in everything that you do. We have faith that you will be able to face everything that life throws at you if you trust in God. You are special, strong, and you hold God close. We have no doubt you will create a beautiful tomorrow for yourself and others around you. For all of you, I wanted to say as you, as you go um, after you finish high school and you step onto the next chapter of your life, if that's, if that's here, um, 
you know that's that's great if if it's if it's uh, other places. I want to encourage you guys to find a church home. Is really a really important thing. If you guys are staying in the area, I expect to see you here. There is, there there really is a Satan works in the world to just just distract you with things that aren't necessarily wrong, but that that pull us pull our time away from Christ and from church and from gathering together. And there is a, a huge blessing to be had in the local church. So if you guys find yourself somewhere new and you don't know anybody. Step out of your comfort zone and find a church that preaches the Bible and get in there and meet people. And in Hebrews 10.25 says, Not forsaking the assembling of yourselves together, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much more as you see the day approach. So I just want to encourage you to always stay plugged into the local church. Be involved. You guys, you guys are and you guys have been. And I want to see you continue that, carry that forward. It's a huge blessing. Thank you. Well, this is what I like to do at this time. Um, let me go ahead and have you guys come back down to this front row if I could. And I'd like to have a time of prayer for our seniors. That's really what a baccalaureate service is all about. Uh, it's a time to have a, a time of corporate prayer as the church for our seniors and also opportunity to give a, a farewell charge to them. And so uh, maybe some of the families, if you'd like, if you'd like to come um, and stand around your young people, some of the church family, if you'd like to come and lay a hand on their shoulder as we pray for them, let's just make this a special time and come together as a church. And I want to pray for these young people. And uh, to lead us in prayer uh, here tonight, I'd like to ask Brother Payne to come and help lead us in prayer uh, during this time. And so uh, go, go ahead, feel free to stand if you'd like to come forward to the front. You can feel free also to stay where you're at if you're more comfortable with that. Um, um, but we're going to uh, take some time to pray for all of our seniors together. And you may not uh, remember all of their names, but I, what I would encourage you to do is, is to write down all of their names so you can be praying for them as they get ready to take this next big step in life. And uh, so, Brother Payne, uh, I'll come down here also, and if you want to start us out in prayer, um, and then, Brother Ken, if I could ask you maybe to uh, close us out in prayer as well, okay? We have a Father, we come to be here tonight, and I want to thank you for each one of these young people. I want to thank you, Lord, for a future they have before them. We just give you the praise in that, Lord. If they're going to use it quietly, the opportunities, you pray God that they would claim the scripture, they hide God's word in their heart, that they would sin against him. I pray God that even this very day, Lord, that you would find Satan and put the way to each one of them. God, that they would be a special thing to point about them, and not only them, but their family, but they also face another step in their lives. I pray that you give each one of these young people, I think of Scott. Thank you, Austin. Thank you, Autumn. Thank you, Melissa. And Lexi, and also Cole. I pray, God, that you would just uh, help us all to be very thankful to continue to pray for them and guide them every step of their life. Lord, just help them, as the pastor said, to memorize the word and hide it in the heart, but more than anything, claim it and use it. I'm just going to give you the praise for the same that you in your life. Continue in prayer. We uh, we continue to lift these young ones up, Lord. We uh, are thankful for each of them. Thankful for the uh, homes that they've uh, grown up in. Father, we uh, just ask that you continue to do a mighty work in their hearts, Lord. Reveal to them what uh, you would have. Uh, this is a, a crazy world right now, and, um, and Christianity is not the most popular thing. And there's so many distractions in this world. Lord, I pray, just as uh, Brother Harold had mentioned, Lord, that we would uh, that you would just direct their paths, Lord. Give them a, a sound mind, give them a, a peaceful mind, a mind uh, to make wise decisions and to, uh, to consider what it is that uh, you would have for them in every aspect of their life, whether it's a decision in, in going to college or not. Lord, I pray um, for each of these that uh, they would live uh, the remainder of their days out for you and uh, that they would love you above all 
and that uh, they would come to uh, continue to just uh, honor their parents, Lord, as, as you call them to. And, um, and Father, we love you. Just uh, just pray for these guys' well-being and their health. And uh, Lord, we, we thank you for them. We pray for these things in the precious name of Christ. Amen. And you seniors are welcome to stay here, but if you'd like to go and sit with your families, you're welcome to do that now uh, as well. Uh, during this time, we're going to sing one more song uh, together. Behold Our God is the last one they asked that we could sing tonight. So let's stand together as we sing this powerful song here. Think about it. Isaiah 40 there. You may be seated. And as you're seated there, I want to encourage you to take your Bibles tonight, and especially you seniors, that you have new Bibles, you can open them if you need to, okay? Uh, <laughs> but uh, Hebrews chapter 13 is where we're going to find our text at tonight. Hebrews chapter 13. We'll jump into the scriptures together uh, right after we hear from one of our seniors and uh, one of our... Uh, Staff from our school, and of course, a dear member of our church, Miss Katie, um, they're going to come and sing a song, God's Been Good, first. the 
old familiar markers of the mercies I have known. I know it may sound simple, but it's more than a cliché. There's no better way to tell you than to say. you're going to be around another year. Envision Baptist College is going to steal away our singer there for a little while, huh? Let's not think about that right now, though. Okay, yeah, there we go. Um, but Hebrews chapter 13 tonight, Hebrews chapter 13 is where we're uh, going to find our text for this evening. And, you know, a baccalaureate service is a time for the local church to pray over uh, uh, the young people that are, that are graduating and it's also a time to give a farewell address, or so I'm told. And uh, those not all of you seniors are moving away. Um, that's where I come in. This is your farewell address. And this message is um, a message that is for everybody, but it's specifically to our seniors. And I want you to listen to uh, some of the counsel from the Word of God here tonight as I thought about what the Lord would have me to share with you. Um, I prayed about a text, a thought, something that uh, usually for uh, an event like this, I'll not stay in whatever series I'm in. And yet, as I prayed about it and thought about it, the Lord gave me peace to stay right where we're at in our study in the book of Hebrews, chapter 13, verses 7 through 9. And I want you to join with me there. And this is what the Bible says. Remember them which have the rule over you, who has spoken unto you the word of God, whose faith follow, considering the end 
of their conversation. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. Be not carried about with diverse and strange doctrines, for it is a good thing that the heart be established with grace, not with meats which have not profited them that have been occupied therein. Here in this passage of Scripture, God gives some practical instruction that is supposed to be used by us as believers to aid us in growing to maturity in our faith. These practical truths that God gives to us are supposed to be um, tools that we use and put them in shoe leather to help us and guide us with every step that we take in life. And especially for you seniors, as you commence in this next step of your life, these truths are going to become increasingly more important for you. You see, all that you have learned up to this point in your life has prepared you in some way for what you are now going to face in your young adulthood. The trials, the burdens, the instruction, the fears, the tears, uh, the years in school, all of these things God wants to use to help you commence into adulthood. And furthermore, for each one of you, you have, I know because I have visited with you about this, you have received a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And I tell you, there's nothing more important to guide you in this next step of your life than your walk with God, than your personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Beyond that, I believe each one of you has been instructed from God's word by a godly mentor or godly mentors. And uh, those individuals would include your parents they would include people from this congregation or from your local congregation at baptist chapel um all of you have godly people that have been placed into your life that have helped give you direction and helped give you instruction and uh, that instruction that god has blessed you with god now has stewarded to you to do something with as you move into your young adulthood and for all of us who were once in the same shoes that these seniors are in, these truths could be said uh, for our lives today as well. And so here's what I want to say. If you are going to realize the purpose that God has for your life, if you're going to find out what the purpose is that God created you for and go on and fulfill what we often refer to as God's will for your life, you are going to have to continue to allow these influences that have been put into your life to continue to shape your life in the days ahead. We'll talk about this more in a minute. But the temptation is going to be to allow new influences to enter your life to shape you in a way that God never intended for you to be. If you are going to go on to, the, to maturity in adulthood and fulfill the purpose that God has for you, you're going to have to do it God's way. Make no mistake about it. And so I believe the principles that we uh, receive here in the scripture uh, give us some truth that will help shape your life for God's purposes. It will help shape your life for God's glory. And I want to give you these four truths uh, very quickly here tonight. Now, before we jump into these, let's pray and ask God to speak to our hearts. Father, thank you for this opportunity to gather around your word. And Holy Spirit of God, I pray that you would now move in and take over and Lord, not a word from my mouth needs to come from me. It needs to be you. And uh, Lord, I am preaching to these seniors um, and preaching for all of those who are gathered here and any of those who may be watching on a live stream as well. And I pray, God, that you take these truths and bring them home for people in a way that only you can. And I pray, God, you would move in our midst and just take over during this service. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Four truths that will help shape your life for God's glory and for God's purposes. Number one, if you're going to take notes, remember the influence of spiritual leaders. And we talked about this briefly last Sunday. I'm going to continue on with this thought. But remember the influence of spiritual leaders. Look at verse number seven again with me. Remember them which had the rule over you, who have spoken unto you the word of God, whose faith follow considering the end of their conversation. 
What the Bible tells you here is that first you are to remember those who have led you spiritually throughout your life. It's a specific instruction that is given to you here in the scripture. There are many people who have influenced your life to some capacity, some good, some bad. But what the Bible and who the Bible is specifically talking about here is to remember those who have impacted and influenced your life spiritually. Not just influenced your life, but influenced your life spiritually. Influence your life to become a more godly person. We talked about this last week, so I'll just breeze over this, but the type of spiritual leaders being talked about here are selected leaders. They're the ones who have the rule over you. That means that they were given authority in your life. You did not choose these people. God chose these people and put them into your life. And it's your, not, your, not your prerogative to question who God has placed in your life, but to trust his sovereignty. As you move from this place, you'll go to new churches. You'll go to uh, new places, new jobs where you have new relationships, and you don't get to control all of these factors. But the fact is, God has given you parents. God has given you pastors. God has given you mentors of all different kinds and placed them into your life for a specific reason. And what the Bible says is that you are to remember that spiritual authority in your life. These are not only selected leaders, but these are scriptural leaders. The Bible says here, they have spoken unto you the word of God. Their influence in your life has not been secular, but it has been scriptural. And boy, you ought to thank God for anybody who will speak God's word into your life. The Bible says, remember these spiritual influences. They are selected, they're scriptural, but I find they're also spiritual leaders. The end of the verse, it says, to follow their faith, considering the end of their conversation. These are people that have not just led you by instruction, but they have led you by example. And you mark this down, and you listen to me, seniors. Before you follow someone, you better consider, consider where the path that they are encouraging you to go down is going to take you. The Bible says consider the end of their conversation. Any person that I think that I want to follow in my life, one of the first questions I ask myself about them is do I want to end up where they're at, their, where they're at in their life today? Because if I don't, I don't have any business following them. These are spiritual leaders. You're supposed to consider the end of their conversation and follow their example. And listen, one of the things, I remember being 18, 19, I was 17 when I graduated, years old. I remember that. And I fully remember having this um, feeling in my heart that I really had things figured out. It's pretty dumb. Now looking back on it. I didn't know a thing. <laughs> I, I, I hadn't a clue what life was really all about. And I'm not insulting your intelligence. Well, I guess I am insulting your intelligence, okay? But you don't have it figured out. And just because you've graduated from high school or are about to do so does not mean you're not going to continue to need spiritual leadership to help counsel you and guide you. Listen to me. I call pastors. I call my parents. <laughs> I call my dad. I call them almost on a weekly basis because there are a lot of things that I, I still haven't figured out. My pastor gave me this advice when I became a pastor. I said, how do you, how do you know what you're supposed to do to advise people? And he said, let me tell you what I did when I, was, when I was your age. People would come in and tell me their problems, and I'd listen. And I'd say, I'm going to pray about that, and then I'm going to get back to you about what God's word says. Then they'd leave, and then I'd call my pastor they just told me, and I have no idea what to tell them. <laughs> and it's not, doesn't happen exactly that way. But we all still need counsel. We all still need direction. We all still need instruction. And the Bible tells you you're to remember the spiritual authorities in your life. Now that word remember, it means to be mindful of them or to acknowledge them. In other words, you need to trust God's plan to let spiritual leaders lead in your life. It's a decision of faith. But it's something that all of you need to determine in your heart that you are going to do as you move forward uh, in, in the future days of your life here. 
And by the way, Hebrews 13, 17 says that such people watch for your souls. They're not just looking out for their own interests. Spiritual leaders are looking out for your best interests in the context of God's will. And so remember the influence of spiritual leaders. Here's a second truth that'll help shape your life for God's glory. If you're writing this down, you can write this down. Rest in the immutability of God. Now you're seniors. You should be able to to spell immutability now. Okay, okay, maybe not, okay. Austin's like, no, no, that's not happening. Immutability, wow, that's a long word. Okay, okay, so first I told you, remember the influence of spiritual leaders. Here, rest in the immutability of the Lord. What is immutability? Immutability is a characteristic of God. It means he's changeless. It speaks of the changeless nature of our God. And, you know, all throughout the book of Hebrews, we've studied And the apostle has written to these Hebrew believers about change. The old covenant was changing. There was a new covenant now. They no longer had to practice the ceremonial laws. A new finished work through Jesus Christ has been established. And all throughout the book, change has been a dominant theme. But in the midst of all that change, he wrote to these believers and told them this in verse 8. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today, and forever. Change is something that is going to be constant and continual in your life. And, boy, life is going to hit you fast. Uh, It seemed like life went so slow until I graduated. And I don't know what happened after that. It is going so fast. And you may not fully understand that now, but I hope you listen to me in understanding that a lot of change is coming your way. In the midst of all that change, it's easy to lose heart. But in the midst of all that change, you can cling to one unchangeable truth, and that is that Jesus Christ will never change. He'll always be there for you. Your relationships will and may change. Your circumstances in life will change. Hey, um... Uh, where you live, where you work, uh, where, you, where you, all these different things, those factors are going to change in your life, but the one thing that will never change is your Lord and Savior, Jesus, Jesus Christ. And the only cure that can help you overcome the fear of change in your heart is going to be to learn to rest in the changeless uh, Lord Jesus Christ. I like what one person said. He said, the secret of our confidence in a changing world is the unchanging Christ. That's your secret to confidence. And, you know, there are, there are some who have risen to to question the truth of of who Jesus is and, and what he has accomplished, but, and you're going to face people that are going to question your faith in the days that are coming ahead for you. You're also going to have to be brought face to face with some issues of your past that you've never dealt with before. And it's important you remember that Jesus Christ is still the same yesterday and today and forever. In your yesterday, Jesus still died on that cross and paid for all of your sins. In your today, he's still risen and can give you victory over what you're facing. And your tomorrow, Jesus Christ is still coming again and we still win at the end of this messed up world. Those truths will never change, no matter what you're going through. It's important that you mark it down in your heart and you don't forget that you can rest in the immutability of the Lord. Throughout my life, many of my spiritual leaders have changed. Out of the five men that I've called pastor in my lifetime, three of them are no longer in ministry today and not because they've retired, because of change. I won't get into why now. Friends that I've had that were serving the Lord, they've changed. People have changed their doctrines, changed what they said they believed. I have people that have been involved in my life that have even tried to change their gender because of the society we're living in today. All this change is going to happen around you. People you thought would never change will. In the midst of a changing world, they'll always be the unchanging Jesus Christ. Let me give you this word of counsel. Never build your life on a spiritual leader. 
the best of men are men at best. Don't build your faith and your confidence on someone who can change. Build it on someone who cannot change and who will not change. Keep your eyes on Jesus Christ. So number one, I said, remember the influence of spiritual leaders. Number two, rest in the immutability of the Lord. Here's number three, refrain from the infection of false teaching. Refrain from the infection of false teaching. Look at verse number nine with me, if you would, in your Bibles. This is what the Bible says in the first part of the verse. It says, be not carried about with diverse and strange doctrines. Will you read that out loud with me? Be not carried about with diverse and strange doctrines. Here you are warned of those who would seek to cause you to doubt the truth you have learned with their new and diverse teachings. And I find it interesting that the instability of this ever-changing world is set on contrast with the immutability of Jesus Christ. In other words, Jesus Christ never changes, but there will people, be people in your life who will try to change you and will try to change what you have learned about the Lord Jesus Christ and from the word of God, from the spiritual mentors who have poured into your life. And so that's what the Bible is talking about here. And I remember as a young man, my father sat me down. Uh, I, was, I was an early teenager when this happened. I don't remember exactly the age. But dad sat me down and he said some words to me that I've, I've never forgot. He said, Bruce, I've taught you everything you need to know. And I thought, really? Cool. <laughs> he said, I've taught you everything that that you need to know everything I can teach you. From this point on, you're gonna have to start finding out for yourself what you really believe. He said, because there's coming a day very soon where, well, that's what dad believes isn't going to be enough. And he was right. In my young adult years, there have been many people who have tried to sway me from the things that were instilled in me from God's word by my spiritual mentors from early on in my life. Oh, your parents were too strict. Oh, you got King James Bible. Why do you use that King James Bible? Oh, you, you, you believe in, in Christ-honoring music? Well, why don't you bring in this kind of music and, and uh, let's try to bring in a crowd. And I've had all different types of people try to convince me of all different types of things. The world has its influence, and even inside many Christian institutions, there are those who have influence that want to try to change you and sway you in all different types of directions. The Bible is warning here that you be not shaken. It says here in verse number 9, be not carried about with these diverse and strange doctrines. What's interesting about these teachings, the word doctrines means teachings, What's interesting about these teachings is that the Bible says that they're new and they're diverse. And the new and diverse teachings that you face will contradict what you have been taught. The new and diverse teachings that you will face will be foreign to what the Word of God teaches. Some of you will face them when you go to college. You'll hear something and you'll think, that's not what I was taught. And all of a sudden you're faced with a decision. What do you really believe? One thing I've also found out about these new and strange doctrines, these teachings, is that they're, they're entirely unprofitable. And the people that get caught up in them and they choose to believe them, it does nothing to benefit their life. Usually it only does more to take away from their life. And you need to be aware of these things because as young people, you are going to face these things as you step into this next phase in life. Some of you are gonna face it at work. Some of you are going to face it at the schools that you go to. Some of you are going to face it uh, maybe even from your own, uh, your own household or someone that you may come close to in the coming days of adulthood. But you mark it down, it's going to come. And the Bible warns you to be careful of these things. And let me say this, any teaching or counsel that goes against the Bible and the gospel is wrong. And you never doubt that fact right there. Let me tell you what the apostle said in Galatians 1 and verse 8. But though we or even an angel from heaven 
preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have already preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be accursed. I would say that Paul was not being very friendly about the matter. And I am adamant in declaring to you, there will be those who try to dissuade you from your faith or deceive you into following something that is not in the word of God. And you need to stand strong on the things which you've learned and been assured of. You're not careful. You will allow those who teach something other than what the word of God says to lead you away from the truth. In that same book of the Bible in Galatians, Galatians chapter 5, and verse 7, the apostle said, you did run well. Who did hinder you that you're not now obeying the truth? It's never a what, it's always a who. Someone is influencing you to go the opposite direction of what God wants you to go. That's how it will always be. And so be careful, refrain from the infection of false teaching. Here's the final truth I want us to see and we'll be done tonight. Number four, rely on the influence of the Lord. Rely on the influence of the Lord. Now look at verse number nine again, the end of the verse. This is what the Bible says. For it is a good thing that the heart be established with grace. Will you read that out loud with me? For it is a good thing that the heart be established with grace, not with meats which have not profited them that have been occupied therein. What the Bible is teaching you here is that you need to let God's grace lead you to be established in what you believe and what you practice. The purpose of the ministry of the church, the local church, is to help you become established in the grace of God. And the grace of God is what is going to help you grow to maturity in your faith. Let me read to you Ephesians chapter 4. If you'd like to turn there, you can. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 through 15. The church's job, our mission, is to go and win people to Christ, see them baptized, and then to teach them. Teach them what the Christian life is all about and how to grow in the Christian faith. And that process of growth only happens by the grace of God. If you don't become established in grace, you're going to be easily blown around by these dangerous influences we've been warning you about tonight. It's what Ephesians 4, verses 11 through 15 teaches us. It says, And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting or the maturing of the saints, for the work of the ministry, and for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect or mature man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Listen to this. That we henceforth be no more like children, tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of man and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. But speaking the truth and love may grow up in him in all things which is the head, even Christ. Understand this. If you don't become established in this grace that the Bible is talking about in verse nine of our text, you will become like this immature child tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. You know how easy it is to make a kid believe something? I had my whole first grade class convinced I was an Egyptian when I was in first grade. In fact, I had myself convinced I was an Egyptian when I was in first grade. <laughs> Wrong skin color, but I digress. It's easy to make kids believe things. And some of us are just like that when it comes to the strength of our faith. So susceptible to believe anything. So many people that even go to our church on a Sunday morning, they'll turn on people who are heretics and listen to them on Sunday morning. Then they'll come to church and say, you know what? You remind me of that guy. And I think... No. 
but it's easy to be dissuaded or persuaded, dissuaded from what is true and persuaded of something that isn't true if you're not grounded in your faith. And so what the Bible says in verse number nine here is it is good for your heart to be established or made firm with grace. How, did, how, how are you established with grace? What in the world is the Bible talking about there? Well, there's a definition of grace that we don't commonly use. And uh, the, the Greek word charis, it usually will usually give the definition of it meaning favor. But another definition we don't often use is this. Charis can also mean holy influence. And when I discovered that truth, and studying this passage of scripture, it really helped me. Let me make this statement to you. It is God's grace when he speaks into your life his truth and seeks to guide you in his ways. Those of us who have grown to any measure of maturity in our Christian life understand the grace of God's holy influence. You see, to every one of us who are believers, God has given us his Holy Spirit. And it is the work of the grace of God's spirit in our heart that helps us understand the truth of God's word and come to spiritual maturity. Jesus told us this was gonna happen. John chapter 16 and verse 13, Jesus said, how be it when he, the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak and he will show you things to come. Listen to me, young people. You will not always have your parents around to help you make decisions. You will not always have a pastor around. You will not always have a spiritual mentor to turn to. But what you will always have if you are a child of God is the grace of God's holy influence in your life to help you, guide you into all truth. You're not always going to be able to turn to somebody else to tell you what you're supposed to believe or what you're supposed to do. Almost on a daily basis now, I'm faced with circumstances where I have to say, I don't know what I'm supposed to do here. I can't always call uh, uh, someone else to tell me what I'm supposed to do, but there is someone I can turn to. And there is someone who lives inside of me who can guide me and help me to make every decision that I'm supposed to make as I go through this life. And God has blessed me with his grace. He's filled me with his spirit and he's given me the ability to live the life that he has set before me. And he's done the same for you. And there's not a decision you'll have to make. There is not a task that you will have to undertake. There is not anything that will come upon your life that God cannot give you the grace to be able to do it the way that he wants you to do it. And he has given you the grace to become established. The grace to be able to not be led, led astray or led away by these deceitful vices that are in our world today if you will receive his grace. You're gonna live life on your own. You're gonna do your own thing. You have no need of grace. But if you will submit and say, God, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I don't know how I'm supposed to do it. But if you'll teach me and you'll help me, I'm listening. If you'll have that kind of humble spirit with whatever your future may hold, I can promise you, you'll come to realize what the will of God is for your life. And you'll live it. There's no way I could be standing right here today if it wasn't for the grace of God. I'm not smart enough. I'm not good enough. God knows my sin struggles. God knows the things I've done in my past. The only reason I'm standing in the will of God today is the grace of God that has helped me to grow. And if you'll trust in the grace of God, that will be your story too. His grace will lead me home. That's what the old song says. So as you launch out by faith to accomplish God's plan for your future, don't forget where you've come from. Don't forget, hey, to remember the influence of spiritual leaders. Continue to learn from them and follow their example. Don't forget to rest in the changeless Jesus Christ. Don't forget to refrain from the infection of false teaching. Don't be led astray by things that aren't what the Bible teaches. And don't forget to rely on the influence, that grace of the Lord to help you grow to a place of maturity. In conclusion, 
this evening, I want to read to you a passage from 2 Timothy chapter 3, if you'd like to turn over there, that I think so well communicates what we've studied tonight from the scripture. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 13 through 17. Let's turn over there together. If you're there, say amen. The Bible tells us here, but evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise into salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect or mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. My prayer for each one of you seniors is that you will go on to realize God's best for your life. It's not for me to tell you what that is. And God wants to show it to you. And I can promise you, if you will continue in the things you've learned, and been assured of. You continue to hold that Bible that you've been given tonight and let it guide the steps that you take forward from this point on. I can promise you that you'll come to realize what God's best is for your life. And I hope you'll take these truths to heart as you get ready to enter into this next phase of life. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes together. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed. I want to give you an opportunity to respond here this evening. I don't know how God has spoken to your heart. And if he has, I don't know what he has spoken to your heart about specifically. Maybe it's about the need of remembering, acknowledging the influence of your spiritual leaders and what they've taught you in your life. Maybe it's about your need to rest in the changelessness of the Lord Jesus Christ. Maybe it's some false teaching that you become susceptible to, your heart's being led astray that you need to turn away from, refrain from. But maybe it's this matter of relying on the influence, the grace of Christ to help you grow and go on to maturity. Perhaps it's something not even specifically spoken of about tonight, but I want to give you an opportunity to respond as God has spoken to your heart this evening. And I want to encourage you to make a decision with what God has done in your heart tonight, to dedicate yourself to the Lord in some way. So we're going to have a time of invitation, and this is a time for you to pray and seek the Lord as he has spoken to your heart. And so let's go ahead and have the music begin to play. With your heads bowed and eyes closed, let's stand together to our feet. And as you stand to your feet, as God has spoken to your heart, I encourage you to step out and come. If you need to come, talk to the Lord at an altar tonight. Whatever that decision may be you need to make, this altar is open for you tonight.
it's been a good a good time together tonight celebrating these seniors and i am excited to to watch you all grow in this next phase of life uh, i've only been here seven years but it's enough time to be able to see some of our seniors go on and and uh, some of them still doing what's right and still living for the lord and uh, that's what i hope for all of you and your future and uh pray God's best for all of you. And thank you thank you all for coming tonight. I think it was a blessing for us to gather together to honor these seniors and um, just to take some time to pray for them. And they're going to continue to need your prayer and support. They're going to make mistakes. They're going to make big ones probably, okay? But probably not near as big as what you made when you were their age, okay? So give them a little grace. Um, and uh, uh, let's keep loving them as they go through this next phase of life. Um, and that's, I know that's what they need. And so uh, let's, have, uh, let's have all of our seniors maybe go to the back. And uh, I'd like everybody to be able to greet you as, uh, as they're heading out, if you guys wouldn't mind heading back that way. And, uh, of course, all these seniors really need, uh, what they really need for you is to give them money. <laughs> Cole, is that what you told me to say, Cole? Was that? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Oh, he's a jokester. (laughs) Uh, But let's love on them and support them. And, of course, we have our uh, LCA graduation, and uh, a couple of them, uh, homeschool graduates, will also be graduating them this Wednesday at 6. Note that down. It's not 6.30. We normally do 6.30 for the midweek. It's 6 because we have several awards that we need need to give away and things of that nature as well. And then I, I think I could announce this publicly for Autumn's graduation. Uh, I think they've opened it up public. Uh, Autumn's graduation is going to be this Thursday at 6 as well. Uh, that'll be at the Dolores High School if you'd like to go uh, watch her walk uh, as well. Um, I think I've, I think that's everybody that I've mentioned. Hopefully I didn't miss somebody there. So anyways, let's have a word of prayer and we'll be dismissed from our time together uh, here this evening. And Brother Stan, if you'll dismiss us in prayer. Father, we thank you for this this time we've been able to uh, show some honor to the uh, the seniors as they uh, have completed this phase of their lives, Lord. I thank you for this message, this message of uh, just keeping your word and your guidance in their heart and not let this world distract them and and sway them from the truth, Lord. And I pray that you just, uh, that those truths are just cemented in their heart and they, they seek your word for every decision in their lives. We thank you for our pastor and his guidance. And Father, we, we just thank you for this, this time together. We pray you bless us each as we go. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.